Welcome back to Supernatural Studies 656, How to Survive a Horror Movie. If you're looking for Supernatural Studies 666, Eternal Damnation for Fun and Profit, that's down the hallway and through the dimensional rift. <laughs> now, today we are going to be talking about one of humanity's oldest and most tenacious foes, the vampire. We're going to be going over the three main types of vampire with you, how to spot them, and how to kill them. Now, the first type of vampire you have to deal with is your classic or magical vampire. These would be your Nosferatus or your Dracula. If you encounter a man named uh, Van Helsing, not to be confused with Van Halen, this is the type of vampire that you are up against. Now, how do we know that someone is a vampire? First and foremost, they will have pale, clammy skin. The canines will be overgrown. And you will never see them out during the day. This is a pretty good tip. Now, if your suspect is an elderly male of Eastern European descent that lives in a spooky castle, that's a clue, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a vampire. Now, Another pretty good failsafe. This is where our first piece of equipment comes in. I hope you guys all got it at the requisite campus shop. Is a mirror. Magical vampires do not have reflections. Now, how do we get rid of these most potent beasts? First and foremost, sunlight is your greatest ally. They cannot survive it. Secondly, crotches, bottles. Religious texts and documents. <laughs> Vampires have aversion to things of the faith. Holy water is also very handy for this purpose. If you dip your arrows or bullets in it, they will work on vampires, although they will not otherwise. Finally, my personal favorite, get up close to that sucker and give him a steak right in the Yeah! <laughs> Now, second type of vampire you may encounter is the viral vampire. These vampires contract vampirism through a virus in the bloodstream. These would be your I am legend or blade vampires. These guys are a little bit trickier to deal with. You want to always make sure you got yourself a flashlight with a UV bulb in it. They don't much like that UV light. My personal suggestion is a police brutality edition mag light. That way, if they get too close, you can use it as your outline in defense. <laughs> now, these suckers have reflections, so you can leave the mirror at home. But they may be susceptible to good old bullets. <laughs> if there is a black man with a large sword strapped to his back running around, there is a very good chance that you are facing viral vampires. Stay with him, he'll keep you alive. His name is Blade. <laughs> now, with these vampires, again, good old piece of wood right through the chest. Never fails. Now, the third type of vampire that you may encounter is the trickiest one to deal with. Simultaneously, the most dangerous and the most harmless. These vampires are incredibly dangerous because they are so hard to detect. And yet, they are just as fast, strong, and powerful, and vicious as the other ones. They have reflections. They don't have an aversion to garlic, or crosses, or even holo water. However, there is one telltale sign that you have encountered these deadly, deadly vampires. They sparkle. <laughs> you may be wondering, how can I possibly deal with this threat? Well, the answer is quite simple. Find yourself an average looking brunette. <laughs> it's better if she's clumsy. Then go to your nearest Native American reserve. Find yourself a nice Native American boy. Pair up the two of them. Put them in the vicinity of the vampire. Now, I can't promise that the vampire will be eliminated. However, they will be so engrossed in a teenage love triangle <laughs> that you will be able to make good your escape. 
<laughs> now, I think that just about does it today. Remember, your essays on uh, anti-zombie tactics are due on Tuesday. And next week we have our guest speaker, Dr. Frankenstein, who will be talking about uh, suspended animation and uh, tissue regeneration. See you next class. <laughs>